Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Lucy, the Eternity She Wished For. Previously, we had quite a meaningful episode where we discussed, let's say, what basically Lucy wants from life, in that uh, quite touching and poignant scene in the scrapyard. And now today we're going to continue right from that point, as our two characters return home, basically. And yeah, it's this one. I enter the house. I don't hear anyone, but I see my father's shoes. Oh boy. Could he be taking a nap? A permanent one, hopefully. It would be a blessing if we didn't run into each other. Carefully, without making a sound, I enter my room. Oh boy, this, lo this slow transition does not bode well. Or maybe not. Maybe he was asleep and we don't have to deal with him this time. October 30th. Lucy. This is actually from her point of view. Hum, hum, hum. Lucy is cleaning a room. She appears to be in a good mood today. The room is not very messy. But that's only because Lucy has been working diligently. And even though the room is not messy, Lucy continues to clean as usual. It's already become a part of her daily routine. Without allowing a single speck of dust to fall onto the floor, Lucy proceeds with clinical efficiency. Here and here. Lucy glides across the floor with the vacuum cleaner. She dusts each and every corner and organizes the pile of books on the desk. I would like to apologize if I sound a bit rough, unusual. I've actually just come from outside and I'm a bit winded. Hopefully some water helps. She hangs up the jackets inside the closet and places the folded underwear inside various drawers. She repeats the process. Not too long after, she finally stretches her back. Then she wipes her forehead with the back of her hand. Whoa, it's finally done! The way she massages her waist while letting out a deep breath is no doubt the appearance of a typical woman. She stares at the sky through a window. It sure is a lovely day today. It's been a while since she'd seen such warm, sunny weather. Compared to the chilly weather she'd been seeing lately, this was quite rare. The sunlight is faintly shining down from the sky. Hopefully, it'll stay this warm. It's almost time for her master to return home from school. She makes her way towards the living room to finish up the rest of her chores. Huh? When Lucy arrived in the living room, she tilted her head in confusion. It was because she had heard something. It's father's voice. She can't make out what he's saying. But he's speaking quite loudly. It doesn't seem like he's just talking to himself. Soon enough, Lucy hears the voice of another person. It's a woman. Perhaps father has brought a guest home. With careful steps, Lucy makes her way towards his room. But she suddenly stops to think. She is reminded of father's frightening demeanor. She might get scolded again if she runs into him. Feeling a little scared, Lucy stops at the base of the door. From there, she cautiously peers into the room. Oh boy, this guy again. She sees father. 
He's talking to a lady that Lucy is not familiar with. She looks like she's in... She looks like she's in her early 30s. Lucy quietly mutters to herself. Who could this be? It's Lucy's first time seeing her. Being careful not to get caught, she listens in while keeping a distance. Her sensitive ears begin to pick up their voices clearly. Alright, I gotta remember this damn guy's voice. I blame everything on the robot. Nothing's been going well since that thing came along. Could... Could they be talking about Lucy? Lucy knows that eavesdropping is bad. But overcome by her curiosity, she continues to listen. My son has started acting strange. He was never like this before. He was a mindless zombie. Why can't he be a mindless zombie bef again? Uh, are you sure? I've always felt that he was the rebellious type. Yes, I'm sure. He might have been a little on the quiet side, but he still used to be a good kid. Well, if you say so, dear. She must be Master's mother. Yeah, the... the second wife, that is. The... What's it called? Not foster mom. Stepmom, yeah. Lucy came to the conclusion from the way the woman was talking to father. She had heard once from Master that father had remarried with a young secretary, who was also probably a freaking gold digger. A gold digging hoe. But it seems that she doesn't stop by this place very often. I'd been thinking something was up, but I never thought his condition would be so severe. He's completely out of it. To think that he's confusing a robot with a human being. Ah, that's just like what's... Ah, that's just like what's been on the news lately. How could a young boy like him lack such common sense? Confusing a machine with a person. That robot is strange. It's eerily realistic. It's, a f it's far better at copying people than other models. I've seen that sly contraption laugh and cry. Unlike you. Didn't you say once that she has quite the looks too? Since she is just like a person and listens to his every command... I can see how it could be problematic for a boy his age. Quick, let's get him a hooker. But still, she's just a robot. Perhaps he is having trouble at school. Trouble? Don't they say this often? That unsociable children are usually the ones to get attached to androids? Hmm, or maybe, just maybe, it could be a father that doesn't give a damn about his kid, beyond paying the bills. Since they have trouble getting along with people, they grow close with androids instead. Yeah, because she shows some goddamn affection. Robots are always willing to listen to them, unlike people. It's clear that he's having trouble with his school life. I wouldn't know. I barely know the kid, even though he's mine. Since he rarely ever talks about what happens at school. Anyway, it's certain that the robot is the cause of all these problems. There's no doubt. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Isn't it obvious? What do you mean? Why don't you just go and destroy it? What? Go dispose of it. The robot's the reason behind all this, right? She's worse than him. If that was even possible. Her words were followed by a moment of silence. 
But then he'll be really upset about it. Then he's gonna murder me in my sleep. Isn't it just like a toy anyway? When his condition improves, you can always buy him a new one. Yeah, and... <laughs> Can't you see the stupidity in that argument? The robot's the problem, let's destroy it and buy him another one later. It's not as simple as that. The robot looked a bit special. Then, are you planning to leave things the way they are? You think his feelings are more important than his future? I don't know, I'm a terrible parent. Something must be done about this, right? Yeah. Then just get rid of it. Go smash it into pieces or set it on fire, whatever. I'm gonna set you on fire. Father appeared to be mulling it over. You're right. Gotta listen to my young secretary gold-digging hoe of a second wife. That robot is the cause of all this. If that robot disappears, you're gonna scar your child forever. If that robot gets out of the way, everything will soon return to normal. As in, your kid is gonna be depressed again and lonely. Well, that was depressing. That was as far as Lucy could listen. She couldn't bring herself to stay any longer. She started to walk away from them, looking sullen. Correction, she tried to get away. Ow! While scrambling to leave, Lucy bumped into a nearby display containing a jar. She managed to catch it just... She managed to catch it just in time to prevent it from crashing onto the floor. But she made a lot of noise in the process. Who's there? Father and a woman rush out of the room. Uh, um... It's you. Were you listening? Lucy makes an excuse while putting the jar back in its place. Lucy is very sorry. She didn't mean to eavesdrop on purpose. That's enough. It makes everything a lot easier then. I order you to leave this house. We have no use for you. There's nothing we need from you in this household. Yeah, we don't do compassion and kindness in this house. So leave. But, but Master is... My son doesn't need you either. He's only confused because he's young. I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him a real woman. You're not being of any help to my son. You're only causing him to suffer. So run along. Forever disappear from our sides. Lucy... Lucy stood in a timid posture. But her voice was as firm as ever. With all due respect, Lucy doesn't agree with father. What? Lucy believes... Lucy believes that she's being a great help to master. In the past, she wouldn't have been able to say for sure. But now it's different. She continues to speak with great confidence. Master has told Lucy... Master has told Lucy that he needs her, because his father is a piece of shit. That is why Lucy does not wish to leave. She would like to continue to help Master. All right. It doesn't seem like we'll get anywhere by talking. Father disappears off somewhere. One moment later, he, can, he returns with a container filled with gasoline in his hand. He pours the gasoline onto Lucy. 
The gasoline makes a loud splash as it makes contact with Lucy. She soon becomes drenched from top to bottom. Lucy stands in silence with the gasoline covering her body. Father takes out a lighter and flicks it on, not realizing that, could, that he could set his own house on fire. He holds the lighter threatening, threateningly close. This is my last warning. Leave if you do not wish to be turned into a pile of ashes. And don't you dare come back. Stay out of my son's life forever. Lucy silently observes her slim body. What should... What should Lucy do? Lucy tries asking herself. But there isn't anyone that could give her an answer. Without knowing what to do, Lucy remains standing still for quite a long time. Her body is designed to be able to withstand intense heat for a short while. But it won't, but it won't be long before she begins to melt. Lucy suddenly remembers Master's order. Run away if she's in danger. That was the order. Lucy didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to do, but she decided to leave the scene first. Staying here would be going against the second and third laws of robotics. In order to prevent that, Lucy begins to move. Please take care. With a sad look, Lucy leaves. Don't even think about showing up here ever again. If you do, you'd better be prepared to pay the price. I am in no way exaggerating. Keep that in mind. All Lucy did was to give the ground a lonely stare. Did she really have to part with Master like this? With a heavy heart, she made her way outside, leaving, leaving behind a slimy trail of gasoline. Father followed after to make sure she left. Oh boy. Then again, she could just go out and meet him on the way. Once outside, Lucy found herself staring at the sky absentmindedly. It was bright and sunny out, which had been a rare sight in the recent weeks. Lucy stopped in her tracks momentarily as she stared into the sky. Then she smiled brightly. It was a refreshing smile free of all the cares in the world. It sure is a lovely day today. She thought it would be good weather to go for a picnic. And that's another chapter and uh, things are quickly coming to a head here. October 30th, you. As soon as the classes were over, I prepared to leave. Dr. Gears struck up a conversation with me immediately after the bell, which was a real bother. I couldn't really pay attention to what he was saying. It was something along the lines of him wanting to gang... It was something along the lines of him wanting to hang out with Lucy again, but I ignored him. She's my robot girlfriend. I set aside his demands and headed home alone. It feels like I've been getting home a lot earlier lately. And it really is true. 
I've started going straight home after school. In the past, I would have wandered aimlessly in the streets to pass some time. But I can no longer do that. Because there's someone waiting for me at home. I would have never imagined in the past that this would ever happen. Who knew going home could be this exciting? I wonder what we're gonna talk about today. I wonder what kind of faces she'll make, what kind of stupid things she'll say. I wonder about the most pointless things. The pointless things that I was so excited to see. I enjoy chatting with her about the dumbest of things. How much do I enjoy it? Well, it feels as if my life had been purposefully so dull and so boring up to this point in order to make up for my fated meeting with Lucy. To the point where I, to the point where I would begin to have silly thoughts like these. That's how much I enjoy it. And while he's enjoying it, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Even I think that sounds corny, but it can't be helped. Because emotions are not something anyone can easily control. I decide to pick up my pace just so I'd be able to meet Lucy a little faster. It was when I'd almost arrived home that I began to feel something terrible was about to happen. I didn't understand why, but I could feel it in the air. Something ominous. I quickened my pace even more. I was practically running. What? I couldn't believe what was happening before my eyes. I felt my knees giving way. What kind of sick joke is this? My mouth hung open and refused to close. Yeah, we're at this point. Get ready for the feels, everyone. It's gonna be a, a tough one. Lucy. Lucy was on fire. Her entire body was burning up. In the place where she always used to stand while waiting for my return. While engulfed in flames, she was staring at me. My head went blank. I couldn't process what was happening at all. How did this happen? L Lucy? I didn't feel like the Lucy in front of me was real. It felt as if I was dreaming. I laid a hand on top of Lucy. It was hot. It was scorchingly hot. The pain helped me return to my senses. Ah! Ah! Sorry, I, I'm terrible at doing stuff like that. I charge inside the house. My father is standing in my way trying to speak to me. I cannot comprehend what he's saying. I push him aside and enter the house. I scream. Some more. While running wild like a maniac, I scream at the top of my lungs. I prance around the house in a crazed fit. My vision is... My vision is turning blurry because of all the tears. Only then, I finally realize that I'm crying. The tears are making it difficult to see where I'm going. I head towards the living room in an attempt to locate the fire extinguisher. And there it is. After finding it, I run as hard as I can with it. I'm in such a hurry that I sloppily fall over with a loud crash. But it doesn't matter. My knees seem to be bruised, but it doesn't matter. Without any delay, I get right back up and continue running. I yank out the safety pin, 
aim the hose at Lucy and release the payload. Faster, faster! Praying that the fire will be put out just a little faster. I continue to spray. After a short while, the fire vanishes like magic. But... But the Lucy revealed beneath the fire did not look too good. I gazed at the various patches of skin that were melted off. Her condition isn't as severe as I thought it would be. Most likely thanks to her fire-resistant skin. I can't see very well due to my blurred vision, however. Lucy! As if my words could hurt her, I call out to her delicately. There is no reply. Her eyes are closed. There is no response coming from her at all. What are you doing? Answer me! I anxiously wait for her reply. I wish for her to open her mouth. But her unrelenting lips refuse to facilitate my desires. They refuse to listen to my earnest request. Lucy, this is an order. Answer me. Answer me, damn it! I try yelling, but it doesn't change anything. Her eyelids are closed tightly shut and wouldn't budge. What? What have you... What have you done? I turn to face my father. Are you happy now? Are you proud of yourself, you piece of shit? Oh, I've done nothing wrong. It refused to listen to me until the very end. Even though I told it many times to leave. All I did was get rid of something worthless. Why? Why did you have to go this far? It's about time you opened your eyes. What's lying before you is not a dead person. It's just a broken down robot. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, definitely more than you. It's only broken machinery. You can always buy another one to replace it. It's not something to get so worked up over. I feel my insides convulsing. A faint, sorrowful voice flows out of my mouth. I don't know anymore. I just don't. When we're able to do something like this, without a second thought, I don't know if we humans really are better than androids. Hint, hint, we're not. I don't know what part of human nature makes us better than Lucy. I just don't know anymore. People take pride in being human. And people do not want to lose their power to govern the world. That is why they fear robots, avoid robots, show contempt for robots, and eventually do something like this without batting an eyelash. Can we say for sure that compared to this android lying on the ground, compared to Lucy, are we humans truly more deserving to exist on this planet? I wasn't so sure anymore. Ma... Then I suddenly heard a voice. It was Lucy's voice. M master She sounded strained, as if her light was about to flicker out at any second. Her body was damaged to the point that it was almost painful to look at her. 
but she still retained her usual voice that I had been longing for. Her eyes were firmly locked onto my face. You... Are you all right? Yeah. Yes. Her voice is quivering uncontrollably. Her body is also making a lot of strange crackling noises. She doesn't look right at all. She looks as if she's about to seize up at any moment. And yet, despite such hindrance, she was trying hard. She was trying hard to say something. It's... it's not... It's not father's fault. She is in such a pitiful state, yet she spoke so calmly. She sounded as if she was trying her best to make me feel at ease. Her stolid composure made my chest tighten. Lucy... Lucy ended up breaking the laws. Lucy broke the laws and paid the price. Lucy did not obey Master's order. Lucy did not protect herself. Lucy did not run away from danger. Lucy stayed right here. That is why things turned out this way. It's all Lucy's fault. The Free Laws of Robotics The unescapable chains humans have bestowed on robots. Is she trying to say that she's in this state because she broke the laws? Is she trying to say that fire had nothing to do with it? I feel a sudden surge of anger welling up inside me. You idiot! What did I tell you? Run away! I told you to run away if something ever happens to you. I thought I made that very clear. I even ordered you to. Why didn't you listen? Why didn't you listen and let yourself get hurt? After hearing those words, Lucy tried to smile. She tried her hardest to smile. Her voice was so faint that I couldn't make out what she was saying. What? Because... Because Lucy made a promise that she would greet Master, that she would wait for Master in front of the house every day. Lucy promised with Master that's why she wanted to stay. Lucy wanted to stay right here. From here in front of the house, as always. Lucy wanted to greet Master with a smile. Lucy wanted to continue making Master happy. But... But... But that was just a promise. You didn't have to wait for me. I told you that wasn't an order. You could have just ignored it. A weak smile forms on her face. Lucy can't do that. If Lucy breaks that promise, if Lucy isn't here for Master when he comes home, then Master will definitely feel lonely. Lucy remembers Master's lonely face from the past. Lucy did not want to ever see it again. That is why Lucy couldn't break that promise. And like that, she continued to spout nonsense. Nonsense that only a true robot could fathom. Lucy has a responsibility. A responsibility to stay by Master's side. A responsibility to make Master happy. That responsibility is definitely more precious than Lucy's life. It's something Lucy must fulfill. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. But it freaking does, dude. She stayed for it because... Her making you less lonely was more important than the value she placed on her own existence. Duh. How am I... 
How am I supposed to be happy after seeing you like this? Her body began to convulse. I understood the implications behind such abnormal movement. She was making her final struggle. That I would never be able to hear her that I would never be able to hear her voice again. That she won't ever be coming outside to greet me again. Or making me angry with or making me angry with her silliness. Or lightly caressing my forehead. The tears are blurring my vision, making it making it hard to see. I hastily wipe my eyes clean. Please, don't cry. This is fine. I couldn't understand the meaning behind the words. What could possibly be fine? Is this really fine for you? Ending it like this? Are you really okay with that? If Master will remember... If Master will remember Lucy for all eternity, then Lucy is satisfied. If Lucy is able to live on in Master's memories forever, then Lucy is satisfied. That is the eternity. The eternity. I understood. I understood what she was about to say. The eternity she wished for. Not in the literal sense, but the true eternity we had discussed in the past. If Master will remember Lucy, then she won't have any regrets. Lucy has the confidence that she won't regret her decision. So, will Master remember Lucy? Will Master remember Lucy for all eternity? You're being too selfish. Acting on your own like that. Even if you're fine with the whole situation. Even if you have no regrets. What am I supposed to do? Now that she's leaving me behind, what am I supposed to do? Lucy's head is shaking a little. Huh? That's... strange. Sorry, Master. Lucy appears to be losing her hearing. Oh, dear God. Master's voice is drifting further away. This is bad. Lucy didn't get to... hear Master's reply. Her voice is gradually changing. The crystal clear voice she once had is now turning into a garbled mess. Just like when we first met. Just like back then, when she used to be entirely useless. Will Master remember? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Misclicked there. Lucy's fingers are twitching. Will Master remember Lucy? Nonetheless, Lucy continues to press on. With a voice that might cut off at any second now. She's still desperately trying to hear my answer. I have to make up my mind. After seeing her struggle, I have to make up my mind right here and now. While holding back the cries welling up inside, I give her a nod with my tear-stricken face. I will. I will remember you, damn it. Lucy smiles. Lucy is glad. Lucy's wish, final. Finally. Ca... Lucy? Lucy. 
లు That was the end of it. With that, the conversation never went on. With that, she no longer responded to my cries. The light never returned to her eyes. Now those eyes will no longer meet my gaze. She will no longer smile at me. And she won't be coming back for all eternity. In the end, it was just like she wished for. I can say for sure that she will clearly be engraved in my memories. And with that, the pain will be remembered forever. I will never be able to forget it, even if I wanted to. Now I have no choice but to remember. No matter how mentally exhausted and degraded I become. No matter how painful it becomes. Now I have no choice but to remember her existence. To remember her name. Lucy Valentine, and all the unpleasant memories that come along with it. Dude, it's not just unpleasant memories, come on. That was what she wished for, and it was something unbearably cruel for me to endure. And that's it, folks. Nah, I'm just kidding. There's there's actually a bit more after this. It, it all depends on the, the choices you make, because there's a bad ending and a good ending. And the bad ending is... Well, that too happens after this, but it's different from what you're gonna see, and trust me, you don't want to see that. But there is a good ending, and... Uh, we're actually gonna get to it after this. Although it's probably not going to be in this episode. I, I do want to leave that for the, the ending episode. Also, if I was in the shoes of the protagonist here, I would go after this happened. And I'm going to call the, the closest Dark Eldar Cabal and I would sell my father into Dark Eldar slavery. And even that would be too good of a fate. I didn't think about it earlier, but I should have... Uh... Yeah, I can't do it now. I wanted to, like, raise the volume of the music a little bit. So you can listen. But this game has has actually quite good music overall, so... You can find it on YouTube, the soundtrack. If you like this, you can definitely listen to that. Yeah, so I'm gonna save here, and we're gonna get to the the actual end of the game next time. And yeah, this was this was by far the saddest part of the game. Although the final bit is also very, very, you're gonna get the feels probably even more than than you got just now. But yeah, his dad's a piece of shit. And uh, I would give him to Fabius Bile as an experiment. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching to this point. And uh, there's only one episode now, in case you're curious and I didn't make that clear. Which uh, you're gonna see, well, this goes up on Friday. No, actually this goes up on Monday. This goes up on Monday and then the end will be on Friday. So yeah, thanks for everyone who stuck with me and the people who watched this. And I will definitely see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and bye-bye.